Hello everyone and welcome to Content Marketing Insider powered by Repurpose.io and uh, our guest and I we're going to be talking about how to utilize short form video to grow your brand. It's going to be a very interesting episode. We are going to be talking to the founder and president of SEO, a digital marketing agency that focuses on small to medium sized businesses to generate more revenue and be successful in their business. Please help me welcome Jeff Correct. Jeff, welcome to Content Marketing Insider. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. We're so excited that you can join us here today because it seems like everybody's talking about short form content and uh, we want to uh, pick your brain a little bit today as we talk about short form content. Before we talk about our topic today, maybe you can share to us a little bit about yourself and SEO. I've been in digital marketing for about 20 years. As of 2015, we went really, really hard on SEO after doing web design and everything and anything. So we were doing SEO from about 2015 uh, and then we, we still do it today. But in 2019, I started getting really serious about TikTok and kind of learned the algorithm and found a little platform um, kind of teaching people all the tricks and tips that I learned and, and was able to build a, a nice following that's over 2 million followers today. You know, I started doing TikTok and short form video consulting and kind of teaching business owners and creators kind of how to grow faster, how to leverage their audience to kind of achieve their goals in life and in business. Very interesting. I mean, specifically now that TikTok is one of the social platforms that are just blowing up, thus bringing us to our topic today, how to utilize short form video to grow your brand. I'm sure a lot of businesses want to harness short form video, but Maybe they don't know where to start. Take us by the hand here, Jeff. And there are three things that we want to discuss in making this happen. First point, to reverse engineer the algorithm. Man, this is a very interesting point. Reverse engineering the algorithm. How does that work? When I say uh, reverse engineer the algorithm, we're kind of taking what's working and applying it backwards, right? So we're finding someone who is successful either in our niche or who's doing something similar in another niche or something like that. It's like, okay, what is it that made this person successful? I'll just give you an example, right? So I'm doing, um, I'm consulting with a local boutique for women's clothing. Uh, the business owner is, you know, looking to grow a lot faster on on social. So one of the first places we started is like, okay, well, you're doing this. This is doing okay, but how could we potentially be doing things better? So why don't we go and do a search on TikTok or Instagram for boutique and see, okay, what are their top performing posts? What are the concept? What are the what do the visuals look like? Are we talking a really high-end camera? Are they using a phone camera, right? So we're taking all these signals, including like, what sounds are they using? Do the sounds include words? Are those words uh, transcribed onto the video? Like all those little things. Are they doing trends? What trends are they doing? How long ago did they do that trend? So these are all the things that we're thinking about. It's like, okay, based on everything we've seen over the last month, two weeks, to one week, right? Because trends can be, you know, three days, they can be a week, they could be a couple months. Trends can come and go really quickly. But like, as of right now, what makes the most sense to kind of invest your time in on TikTok? Instagram might have their own set of trends or, or things that are working. So we like to look at the FYP or the Instagram Reels feed or the YouTube Shorts feed even. Take inspiration from that and also do some searching for people in your niche. Like what have they had success with recently? And can we can we one-up them? Can we, do, can we do it even better? Or can we just kind of ride their coattails and maybe throw them some credit? If it's another boutique in another city, you can both have success and throw some credit in there as well. But that's, that's what I mean by reverse engineer the algorithm. Start with somebody who's having the success you wanna have and try to work your way backwards of like how they got there. So that's, that's this is something I do with pretty much anything, um, whether it's a successful person, successful uh, you know account, successful business. How did they get where they're, where they are and how can we try to recreate some of those same steps. So that's the concept of reverse engineering. You mentioned something about TikTok, Instagram, and all the other social platforms. Is the process applicable to all of these channels or is one much harder than the other? I think it's somewhat platform agnostic. I think it'll work on pretty much any platform. Yeah, I don't see why, you know, why this, this concept wouldn't work on one platform or another. The reason I mentioned TikTok and Reels is because those are the two that I have the most experience with. YouTube Shorts, I've noticed kind of a different kind of concept content tend to be successful. Seems to be a lot of podcast clips on YouTube shorts and viral reposted viral videos. It's just kind of like, to me, YouTube shorts feels a little bit less approachable, a little bit higher of a barrier to entry. So let's say, for example, I want to start with 
what you're saying, do reverse engineering, what would be the most ideal channel I would start with, considering that there's a lot of options out there? It's tricky, right? You know, Instagram Reels, I think people can have more success on Instagram Reels right now easier because a lot of the stuff you see on your Instagram Reels feed is not really people. It's almost like a landscape with a certain sound what, uh, that has um, words, you know, like someone talking and those words are on the screen. So for somebody who's just getting started, I might even start with Reels and just try to recreate some of those videos with your own. Take a video of like while, while somebody's driving on the road. We see a lot of that. And then they just that's that's the post. Uh, uh, you know, someone holding up a phone with some with some text superimposed on the screen that just happens to be compelling to people. And, you know, a lot of people surf uh, Instagram with their phone muted or whatever. Having that text on the screen really helps. We're on uh, TikTok. It's a lot more people driven. We really don't see those types of videos as quite as much, anywhere near as on TikTok. It's one of those things that businesses first need to understand and, and try to figure out is where their audience is. Is it on TikTok? Is it Instagram? And that's when you start reverse engineering, as uh, Jeff would say. So I think that's a very great concept. Try to figure out, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Second point that we want to make is that we need to know the trends. This is something that a lot of people are talking about, trends and music and all of that. What do you mean, know your trends? Trends are a huge part of short form video, especially TikTok. And you could, you could probably make the argument of Instagram as well. Whereas the trends on TikTok are more people-based and the trends on Instagram seem to be more sound-based. A lot of landscapes, a lot of just pretty visual with no people in them with like some cool audio where TikTok it's like somebody doing something right if you've done any research on like how to grow on social a lot of people a lot of like TikTok growth gurus will tell you something like apply the, the trend to your niche you know take take a trend and try to find a way to like make it about like what you talk about uh, which is a good idea but I think there's also some more steps that people should take to help ensure your success for example when you're doing a trend I want you to pay attention to who's having success right if you click a sound you kind of look at the people who are having success with the trend for me I would I would try to find a trend that's working for dads, right? People who look around my age, I'm a middle-aged guy. Right, so I'm not going to try to do a trend necessarily that's uh, that's working for a lot of like teenagers. If I do, I know that it'll flop hard. But if I do a trend that's working for a lot of dads, that's going to increase my chances of success. So I would say be realistic. If you do a trend and you're trying to take inspiration, it could be really tough. And you know, we all have only so much time to kind of dedicate to this. I'd I'd rather. People kind of pick, be a little bit pickier and choosier about like the, the trends they do. It, sh it should make pretty good sense for your niche, but also you, it should be kind of realistic to kind of have success with it. But feel free to experiment. There's a lot of exceptions out there, but just generally speaking, if you kind of don't fit the part of most of the people who are having success with a trend, it might not be worth your time. If you've got all the time in the world, feel free to experiment. You might find some kind of new amazing thing that becomes a massive trend and makes you famous. That's totally possible. I like to start my trend search by just going on the on the For You page or the Instagram Reels feed and just gaining inspiration from what I see. So I'll swipe, 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 swipe. Like, oh, I've never seen that before. Interesting. Swipe, swipe. Oh, and then you see it again from a different person. And then you see it again, you know, five, 10 posts later from a different person. Like, okay, we might have something here, right? So, you know, I might click the sound, do a little bit more research. Um, How long ago did they post it? How many views did they get uh, on this video compared to the average video? How closely do I look to these people? Like if, if, if I look starkly different, it could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing, right? So it's just one of those things to be aware of. But also if it's like a super overused trend that maybe you're just getting on TikTok for the first time in two weeks, everyone and their grandma has been doing it, it might be too late. You got to try to get in early a little bit too. I'm going to try like five or 10 different versions of this trend and see if any of them do well. And generally, I haven't had much success with that. So if you want to try one, just say, does it get above average views for your account? Does it get average views for your account, below average? If it gets above average, you might try a few more. But if it gets like below average, it's probably not worth experimenting with. And if it gets average, it's like, yeah, maybe I would just like try it. And if you get a good response, do more of them and just kind of trial and error like that. The key here, don't just do trends all the time. You want to make mm -hmm. sure that you create content that resonates to your target audience. I mean, that would be sad. Like they discover you and then next thing you know, okay, they, they got no substance. So don't go there. All right. Make sure you go with the trends, get discovered, but continue creating core content that resonates to your brand. Just a little review on the previous two points that we did. The first is in order to utilize short form video, we need to reverse engineer the algorithm uh, check out what's working second is know the trends and see what's happening and see if that's something that you can use for your brand as well here's number three taking matters into your own hands 
wow, when I saw this point, I'm like, I wonder what this is all about. So what do you mean by taking matters into your own hands, Jeff? Your success on social is up to you. At a certain point, you can't really blame anybody else. Either you put the time in or you don't. I personally really struggled. I think my first 20, 25 videos got less than 100, 100 views. Um, I was like, is something wrong with my account? And then I put out a video and it got thousands of views. I was like, oh, let me do more like that. And so I kind of grew with volume. I didn't accept, you know, th these these views were so low. I didn't I didn't accept that, like, I, I wasn't able to grow on this platform. So I, I took matters into my own hands. I grew with volume. If I go back and look at my first few videos on TikTok, I'm like very embarrassing and very cringy. But, you know, every video I did, I got a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And I, I put out thousands and thousands of videos. I probably put out no less than four to five thousand TikTok videos. Which sounds like a lot, but they're actually not that hard. They're not that hard. People people make a big deal. I mean, compared to a YouTube video, like it, once you get good at it, you can crank one out in a couple minutes, right? That's another reason you want to do a lot of it, a lot of volume, because you get you get faster and you get better. Like the the video quality becomes better just based on volume. So I also had to kind of focus on this, carve out time in my day to focus on growing my TikTok. The first thing I did before I started like checking email, I would I would just, you know, crank out two, three, four, sometimes five, 10 videos and just kind of get them out there. So, you know, making this a priority. People say TikTok's easy. It's not, it's not easy, but it is easier than other platforms like YouTube. Now YouTube shorts, to be fair, I haven't put a ton of effort into YouTube shorts, but now with tools like Repurpose, I can because it makes it so easy to kind of cross post my TikToks and my Instagram reels to other platforms. Now I can actually uh, make, make a run uh, and kind of see what I can do it there. Taking matters into your own hands means to me, making this a priority, carving out part of your day to, to focus on this and just doing it consistently over time. We got to work. <laughs> we got to work hard and make it a priority with the amount of eyeballs you can get on these short form video platforms with the amount of effort it takes um, that's a very valuable thing and even if your goal is to maybe push them to a longer form video platform like youtube you know i think i think short form videos is a good way to gain awareness to help grow your other accounts and stuff like that or maybe maybe you want to grow your twitter who knows make this a priority in your life and it's going to pay you back in dividends how many videos would you recommend one would push out in a day? It depends on your life situation. I would do as many as you can without getting burned out. If you start to feel like you're burned out, maybe back off a little bit. If this is actually like a big, big priority and focus for you, as many as you can. If you do 20, 30, 40 a day, either your video quality is going to suffer big time or you're going to get burned out. Okay. Most people can only create like two to three really good quality short form videos per day. Even though tools like uh, Repurpose do save a lot of time, there is a little bit of time investment with uh, doing a little bit of the optimization here and there. I would aim to put out as many high quality videos as you can per day. But when I say high quality, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're striving for perfection and, and amazing quality with every video, you're going to be severely disappointed when that video flops. I would just go like 80% quality. Maybe you start with 60 and you kind of work your way up over time, there is a fine line between um, quality and quantity. And you just got to find that, find out what that is for yourself. If you've got a business to run and you've got a lot of clients, if you could do one or two per day, I think that's pretty good. One more thing uh, before we wrap up the show. If you had an opportunity to talk to a room full of entrepreneurs who are not doing short form content what would you say to these people i would say that um you're, you're missing out on an opportunity it's still early yes um th these these platforms have been around a few years now but it's still pretty early there is once it gets even more saturated in the next few years it's going to be a lot harder to grow um, it's harder to grow now than it was a couple years ago but there's still a lot of opportunity left so i would say make it a part of your marketing routine if it's not you maybe delegate somebody else who's a little bit more passionate or has more time than you or maybe who, who just knows the platform better but definitely you want to be taking advantage of short form video to help grow your brand and your business so basically jeff get started right just yeah. just get started do just do it you're bound to fail if you're not going to do anything any, anyway so might as well get started right and uh learn the ropes as you as you go and grow yeah and don't be surprised if one of your first 10 videos goes viral and viral for you might be fifty thousand views uh you know we've seen we've seen people in their very first few videos getting a million one more thing that i got from what you mentioned earlier was there's a journey and a lot of people don't realize that every single brand, every single entrepreneur, business owner will have to go through a journey of their own. They have to find whatever will work for them because it's not a one size fits all situation, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Find what's best for you. Slow and steady wins the race for sure with this stuff. And yeah, you gotta you gotta just experiment, but also do the things that you, that have worked really well for you in the past, but keep experimenting. 
and your journey will just kind of be the growth that you, I, that you kind of, when you look back and look at your old videos and you look back and you see how many leads you were generated before you started this. And now you've been doing it for six months, a year. And you're like, wow, things have really changed for my brand. And with that, we want to thank Jeff for the time and the knowledge in sharing to us how to utilize short form video content to grow your brand. Jeff, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate the opportunity. And with that, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Content Marketing Insider powered by Repurpose.io. This is Jeff right here. And this is Roy Garcia. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you again next time.